B-Side Word. Hello guys, welcome to the B-Side Word. You're listening to me, Maxi, and I'm sat here with Alex. Yo. Dev. Hello. Emma. Hey. And this week we're going to discuss some second page news for you. And what are we going to start with this week, Emma? Okay, Dev, let's do your article next, I reckon. Give me some info. Okay, Dev. So let's do your article next. <laughs> hand dryers. I just saw the picture. Give me some info. What was the picture? Just a hand dryer and a paper towel. And you decided that was your article. I thought it was. Uh, <laughs> I thought about the Dyson. The Dyson. Uh, have you seen the Dyson hand dryers? Air blades. Air blades. Yeah. They What's stink. Hand dryer to your nose? They stink. Every what? time, like you put your hand through and you like. You have to be very precise because I don't want to touch the sides. That's disgusting. And then oh, there's yeah. the ones, they've got new ones where it's a circle mm. and it's the blades, but the opening's bigger. So they they know that people are complaining about touching the sides. And these, the 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 Dyson, it's like the f- Dyson fan. Have you seen the Dyson fan? How yeah. it's got no blades? The bladeless, bladeless. That's exactly fan, yeah. how the, the new hair hand dryers are. Oh, I haven't seen that. They're, they're pretty good. But the ones so that where you does put it blow all the water down. Does it go? Oh. Oh, I don't go on you or anything. No, no, no. Um, not not that I've no. It hasn't blown on me. Um, where have you even used that? In in the toilets usually. <laughs> in the toilets, I usually good one. Dry. But the ones that you put your hands down, they blow air. But the air blows that stinky water that's at the bottom. Have you ever? I've never. Yeah. Sma- I've never had a bad smell I know from exactly using what you those. Mean. And there's sometimes, like, have you ever looked down in there? There's hair. It's gross. <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> no one cleans that. What's your... My strategy for those is to do one of these. I get it activated with my fingertips and then I do it one at a time. So do so I. I sure my dry. So do I. I do one at, one at a time as well. <laughs> I do that. It's a do you spread thing. your fingers? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, look, i got big hands. I need to make sure these things get dry. My mm. kids do it, but they're small, so they have to go in from the side. Do you touch I, the bottom? I go in from the side. <laughs> do you? Yeah, I like... Do you do that? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I do. Oh, you go like that or like that? No, like... <laughs> hands down or hands... Maxie's not, like, like... <laughs> Maxie's not a gangster. Maxie's not a gangster. He's not, like, doing that. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so... going in. What's up? <laughs> So when yeah, when I use the hand the Dyson hand dryers, I put my hands to the side, either side of it, and I bring them into the center, and I do one slow stroke up, and then I'm done, and I walk out of there. What? Hands dry from that movement? Roughly, mostly dry, not completely. I don't like. I reckon there people are long. looking at you, <laughs> looking at you with your different technique and going, "What the hell is he doing?" Or I'm gonna like, try in my that. head. In my head, I just <laughs> imagine the water like, do you know, like if I don't know if someone teleports somewhere and their body like slowly comes up from their feet upwards. I imagine the water like <laughs> just from my my wrist down just slowly like disintegrating and disappearing. And then once I pull my hands oh out, my it's just one slow stroke and then the water's all gone downwards. It's a bit like, for me, it's like wash it dry. When you get out the shower, if you dry yourself from your feet first, I feel like the water from my hair then drips back down to my feet. So it was a waste. So I yeah. have to start on my head, dry my hair, yeah. then my face, then my top, then go down. Yeah. Huh. Next yeah. time you do this, Maxi, and someone's waiting behind you, when you're done, just have a look back because I want to see. I wonder if anyone's ever like sort of gone, huh? And then just like tried it <laughs> after you. That's what I just said. <laughs> they're like, I'm going to try that. <laughs> well, they're going to be facing the dryer, so they're not going to see you look back, are they? <laughs> Maxi, don't worry about Alexander's suggestion. Stand right next to the dryer and go, oh, you're going to do it, mate. You just look at him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even just look. Are oh, you doing it wrong? <laughs> just tell me, say, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> just walk out. So basically, guys, this article was on basically hand dryers versus paper towels, though. So this guy George Campbell, he's a marketer, marketing person. He was headhunted by Dyson 2006 to like come on board and be, you know, try and get this airblade, you know off the ground um Mm. and since then excuse me since then um you're all clogged up yeah because i i just sneeze and you guys are making me laugh since then the paper towel companies (laughs) (laughs) just give me one second okay so 
hand dryers versus paper towels is like Pepsi versus Coke, right? That's what someone said. Is it? So basically since (laughs) since Dyson came out, the big um, paper towel companies, um, I've forgotten the name, it's like big something over, I don't know, have been throwing... um, Mud at the at Dyson saying they're unhygienic, um, this and that. Don't use them. Like the paper towels is the way to go. So um, I think uh, the thing, the problem was that that towel company was funding a lot of the research and funding a lot of the, um, you know, that type of thing to say that it's bad, that the hand dryers are bad. Um, but there was uh-huh. one um, independent company that did do – um, a In test, the, a, yep. re, a peer-reviewed study. Um, so they summed up that they basically said that the paper towels did come out a little bit in on top. But then this is the thing where d- a lot of the competition between the two isn't just hygiene. It's also um, cost efficient, like cost. It's about sustainability. Yep. Yeah. Like you were going to say. So, you know, the paper towels, they spend, I, th- I had some figures here. Um, yeah. So, um, where was it? There's one here. It's not a good figure, but it says, I, uh, this is someone from the dryer company says, I tell them that the upfront cost of my dryer is probably three to 400 pounds. Then it takes about five pound a year of electricity to run. Uh, otherwise I'll be buying thousands of pounds worth of towels a year. Thousands. Yeah. So apparently in 2020, in 2020, (laughs) Donald Trump Trump said that I reckon. (laughs) Millions of- <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's dependent on where like your toilet is. Like if it's in like an underground station, yeah, you would yeah. go probably through thousands of well, pounds. In that case, so- you need more than one hand dryer. Otherwise, you're well, going through next year, at, like, according to market research from a firm called Tech Technavio, the world will buy roughly four billion dollars or three billion pounds worth of multifold um, paper towels. Um, in the same year, hand dryer sales will jump from 856 million, having grown 12% every year, which is why the paper the paper towel industry are not liking them because they've taken a massive chunk of their earnings. Um, it's like petrol in electric cars. Yeah. But then also you have issues like um, with the paper towels, they end up all over the floor. They end up stacked high in bins. You've got all costs associated with that. Apparently arson's a big one. Like... Just oh. people burning the bins, like all this side stuff that you've got to deal with. Um, and those hand dryers can last years and years and years and years and years. So I don't know. I think hygiene wise, the paper towel wins, but I'd probably go hand dryer. And to be honest, do I think n- when there's an option of both, I usually go hand dryer. Cause it's do you know what my, um, my question has been like this whole story of what mm-hmm. I'm thinking? Does this move to toilet paper at some point? Like, are we going to bidet instead of toilet paper? Oh. I hope so. We talked about that. <laughs> Who talked about that? <laughs> we did. When? Oh, but about bidets. But I'm, no, gen- like, from, I'm just thinking about, I was thinking about it from a sustainability point, point of view. Like, <laughs> Emma's face. Toilet paper. Well, I just, okay. <laughs> more of that thing. gets used in hand towels, I reckon. I've never in my life used a bidet, ever. But I feel like if it's at your own home, it's different. But I don't want to be using a bidet or a bidet that is like in a public toilet area. Like I just don't. Oh, you're not using a bidet in a public toilet area, are you? I don't know. Is that what you said? To- get rid of toilet roll I, and, and, and bring in the... No, I, I was just wondering what, what could replace toilet paper. Would it be a bidet? Maybe it could oh. just be like leaves. One minute, one in. Oh! No, but that's not that's not good. You're taking the leaves off the tree. <laughs> you put it back if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You walk in, you walk in, and there's a plant next to you. You don't take the leaf off. <laughs> it's still attached. <laughs> oh. Wait, but Maxie, it's just a plant. I'm gonna ask you this. I'm asking you this, Maxi, because I don't know. What? <laughs> On a bidet, nothing like there's no physical. Uh, interaction with anything is there? Isn't it just <laughs> the water? water? The, ones, the water. The ones I used, you have to. It's a hose. You just pick up the hose and you squeeze. You, you you turn it on and then you aim where you want to aim. I didn't sit on the ones where it's automatic and it come out of the toilet. You'd want it automatic because you don't want to be touching someone else's hose. But <laughs> <laughs> well, it's I mean, a hose that on. someone else has you touched. Wouldn't, you wouldn't want to touch a hose that people have grabbed with their hands, but you'll sit on a seat that they've put their bum on. As long as the only thing I I think about sometimes is like. 
I mean, I don't, they're pretty powerful, so I can't imagine someone could do this. But if someone like, do you know when kids drink like out of oh. bottles, they just like put everything too close and get in there too much. So I, I that's oh, what I was going to oh, say. Oh if they went too close. <laughs> if they went too close. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Too far. <laughs> That went through my head. Just too. a fun fact. I don't know how true this is, but someone told it to me and it sounded logical enough. I was like, yeah, right. Um, yeah. This might be disproved by Emma's hygiene test, though. Was <laughs> toilet paper. Um, if you're going to use toilet paper in a public place, you should like probably take the first layer off and get rid of I it. I do. Because Every time. that absorbs the bacteria that's from the toilet and in the air most oh yeah. So okay yeah I, I didn't do it for that reason but that's absolutely true 100 percent true which is why you should also never keep your toothbrushes anywhere near the vicinity of your toilet yeah, um and to also to two meters yeah like you keep, it, keep your toothbrushes on the other side and also close the toilet lid when you're flushing it every time to try yeah. and keep everything inside or what because all the particles from whatever you've just done in the toilet actually come up when you flush the toilet. They come up and they land on your toothbrushes. They've done so many tests it's, on it's this up, and it's, it's like dirty. Yeah, your, yeah, your, you undies, your undies is... Um, hang on a sec. Your undies is like a poo filter. <laughs> okay, let's do my one. So this... Um, Melbourne in Australia, suburb home. It's a four bedroom home, nice, really nice house, um, nice outlook, stuff like that. Posted an ad on Gumtree, equivalent, I don't know what your guys is, where you just post like anything. Um, yep. And so they posted this ad for tenants, but the stipulation was that um, you had to be a vegan family to live there and that there's no other food or beverages allowed in the house at all all what do you think about that so i'll i just want to jump in because i've had a recent experience of looking for somewhere to live mm -hmm. um spare rooms in london it literally has an option for whether you eat meat like if you want that to be part of your criteria like there's plenty th that's what? really common here so there's an yeah. actual like because, filter yeah because if you think about it if there are people who are vegans and their reason for being vegan is for example, like moral aspects and stuff, they may not want a fridge with meat in it. Oh, hang on. Okay, yours is slightly different because yours is shared accommodation. This is not going to be shared. This is just they're renting the whole house out to a to a family. It's a four bedroom house. Yeah. So they won't be sharing it with anyone. And they're but saying I mean, it's the same. They you can still there's not just shared accommodation on there. Hmm. So you could be the landlord. Same principle. If you're a landlord and you don't agree with it from a moral perspective, you may just not want people in, oh. in your house that are like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but so I say it's there as well. Like, what do you guys think? Is it? Is it? Uh, can you do that? Yeah, I don't think it's yeah. lawful. Yeah, I don't think not? it's lawful. Why is it not lawful? Well, because there was discussion why about not? it, and it's possibly illegal under the anti-discrimination law um, regarding political preferences. You're not supposed to discriminate in that way at all. Yeah, but like, why would you want to be As in a, a place where where they're they're saying vegans only? Why would you want to be in that well, place yeah, anyway? Well, yeah, agreed. From the that means it's, they're gonna yeah, but, yeah, but you're gonna complain about house. you're gonna complain about like to have a landlord that's gonna just nitpick everything you do you don't want to be in that situation anyway okay let's change it then let's say this landlord doesn't like black people exactly and says, if you're black you're not allowed in here or if oh, you're, not gonna go if you're well. christian okay. you even can't if they're going to nitpick at the fact no but black. you can't okay. you can't compare a, a literal yeah. physical un unchangeable thing to a choice no you, you can't they're two completely different things and, and i'm asking why why is it different but it's a political Be preference you couldn't say choice. but you can't say if you're a democrat you can't live here or like, do you know what I mean? Like it's where, if you're going to say vegan, where does it end? Like, I don't get that. I don't understand. Like, I, I like, is there, is, is there any other example where a habit or the type of person that they are? Dog owner. Like, yeah, but no, because a dog owner has a physical effect on the house. Smokers have a physical, they can say no because it has this effect on the house. Oh, okay. Is being non-vegan, does that have any effect on the house? Yeah, if you so I don't know I don't know the extent to what the criteria or the stipulations are, but vegan isn't a diet. Yeah. Like plant based is a diet, vegan's a lifestyle, which means that the well, furniture you have, like everything, is involved in that. So oh, the way you live okay. literally would impact the living environment. So, so it, on, but it says house is only for vegan family and no other food or beverages allowed in the house. 
suggest maybe so, they're allowed to do it. Maybe it's not the lifestyle. Maybe it's just the food part. Yeah. Maybe, but let's, I mean, let's I, just go with that. We're making assumptions I here. Don't, I say personally that's the case. don't. Underst- I don't understand why. And this has nothing to do with my personal lifestyle. Like I just don't understand why if you own the house, you can't control who lives in it. This is regardless. Uh, and I agree with what, like, like what Dev was saying. Like, why would you want to live in a house with someone who is that type of landlord anyway? No, you wouldn't. wouldn't but you don't live in the house with him. Yeah. No, in terms of if they're your own landlord, they're, yeah. they're directly responsible for your living situation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, as a tenant, you wouldn't. I, I would be like, stuff that, I won't go to your house then. But there's a lot of people that are struggling to find houses. And so if more and more people are like, well, you can't live here if you do that. You can't live here if you do that. You can't live here. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's sort of, mm. very, it becomes difficult, mm. basically. Um, mm. and And it would be the same, like, if it was something, yeah, like else, like what we were saying, like um, your religion what would you or... you compare it to? That, like... Yeah, religion's yeah. a good one. Your religion, like you can't religion's live really here if you're Christian or you can't live here if you're Muslim or whatever. Like it's not, it's just not right. It is discrimination. It I don't think like, it's lawful. You would, you, yeah, it's unlawful for the... Uh, uh, you can't say you can't live here because you're Muslim, right? That will straight away be like, okay, yeah, that's not, you're not allowed to say that. Yeah. But you can say it for vegans. Like, is it... Uh, again if maybe not it's not comparable as in like they're different but then why is it different that's yeah. what i'm asking huh. or it's like saying you can't live here if you you can't live here if you are vegan you must eat meat to live here because i don't believe in veganism or something like you could change it it's, it's not it's not <laughs> right do you know what i mean but um i get like they were saying you know maybe some vegans obviously is like how you were saying it's a lifestyle choice so they don't want to get any earnings that have potentially come from the slaughter of animals or from the person who's involved in the slaughter of animals in any way so i get what they're saying but i just don't think it's lawful in this situation i don't think you should be able to do that when it comes to you but during the interview process uh uh, so you don't put it in so you don't put it in the actual um advertisement but you just ask them Mm. do you eat meat yeah but you're still not supposed to discriminate it's like asking how old are you but, you know, it's like asking a woman, how old are you? Because you're worried that she's going to have a baby in a few years. It's like just testing the waters. Just... What, what I'm trying to get at is like, I'm trying to figure out, is it him being honest? Is that not, are we saying you can't say that? Because I know it's wrong, but him being honest with it, is it, I don't know. I'm just trying to find yes, out. Like, it's I'm, really well, interesting. Are you trying to say like, for example, if they went through the interview process of interviewing potential tenants, like you could discriminate without them even knowing? You could, you, yeah. you could. Honest. So you instead of and exactly the same way a lot of people will do that today with yeah. other things like religion, yeah, yeah. yeah. race, yeah. Uh, but that's been stopped. Like now, like you can't discriminate against religion and race, but you can do it in that way. You can meet people and be like, "I just have a better mm. feel for this person who happens to be white meat eater, whatever." Like this person wants, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um. So it's just you can never stop it, <sighs> but should it be stopped on a systematic? level i guess is the question like and is does veganism fall into that thing can you is that now yeah to like such food extent where it, it affects people that choose to eat meat if you prioritize vegans i guess where like i i have two minds about it in the sense of like from a private ownership perspective i have the i have or i always have the thought of if you own something you have the right to do with what you like that's your thing that you own at the same I, time I can also see that as detrimental, for example, if you think of people who own vast amounts of property and if they discriminated in one way, then that would that would be like massively impactful. But if it's like, I, yeah. like when I think about it from one home, like I just don't see that as impactful. Mm. But yeah. it sets a precedence. That's yeah, why, that's the I thing. Guess. Yeah. I think you have to see it. Like, I th- well, for me, I think it's uh, hmm. as a home, like if you're renting out to somebody else, for me, it's no longer just this is my private property. Like you've now, by taking that step, by saying I'm going to make money off somebody else living in my house, you now have a responsibility to like do it in a um, ethical way. Oh, because you're getting the I earnings from it. Yeah, because you're making a living from it. Well, not making a living, like, but you're taking it. Otherwise, like for me, it's like somewhere in between. Like obviously you can't tell them exactly, like you can't tell them what they have to do with the house specifically, but then how that reflects on like, 
Because I think if you just left it to like completely capitalistic, as in like you just buy a house, you can do it however you want. Like there has to be, there are laws for landlords in place already. Mm-hmm. And I guess the question is how far do you take those? Yeah. Because mm. I think we'd all agree like you can't just cut the electricity off. That's illegal. You can't say actually I don't want to put electricity in the house anymore. Now they're <laughs> suddenly cold and they can't cook dinner and stuff. Yeah. Like, of course that's not allowed as a landlord. Yeah. So like where do you, where do you draw the line? We know there's got to be some rules. But like, where's the where's the line? But as far as as like their living standards, like we're not talking about living standards. We're talking about who you want in your own home. Like you don't have to rent your home. No one like, mm. for example, that person could want to rent their home, and then they get told you can't discriminate in that way, and they go, okay, I'm just not going to rent my home then. Yeah, that, like that didn't benefit anyone at that point. Yeah. Now you've actually oh, you've now get- detrimented people yeah. by putting a stipulation on them. Because now that's. But I also think people, people shouldn't just own homes and keep them empty. I don't think that should be allowed. Yeah, I, d- I disagree with that as well. Yeah, I well, guess like well, no, saying. I guess if if no one can, if no one complains about it, nothing will happen. I guess this will only become an issue if people actually complain and say, "Hang on, I wanted that house. That was perfect for me." Tick 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 ticked all the boxes, and they're discriminating. If it went to courts, um. I- if it went to the court, I reckon that, that it would be in favour of the tenant. So uh, are we saying that it's because they're it's because it's someone's choice that they're, they're judging someone else's choice? Is that what we're uh, is is that what is the problem here? Someone's chosen to be a meat eater. Yeah, and that this person is penalising the meat eaters for their choice. Is that the problem? I'm trying to understand. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's kind of what we're so. getting at. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like Emma the, said, uh, though. It might not be a penalization. It might be like their view might be they don't want to take quote unquote blood money or what, what it, like whatever their perspective is. It may yeah. not be a case of I'm doing this because I don't I don't agree with you, but I'm doing this because I personally don't like I can't take that money. Like, I don't, yeah. it doesn't seem right. right with me. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but like the way I think my initial thought on it is kind of like I don't eat meat. If someone, if there was an advert saying you can't live here if you don't eat meat, then I'd be like, all right, like I wouldn't care. I just wouldn't. I'd look somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, so I, I get. I, I guess mine. most people yeah. would do that, but it is difficult. Like if you maybe are struggling, especially if you're in an area where there's a lot of competition. Like there were some places where we were looking, there'd be like twenty other families yeah. rock up as well, and yeah. it's like a massive, like just yeah. huge competition. People putting down six months rent up front or like a year's rent up front or just all these like paying extra or whatever to try and get in. So if having, you're in, having kids was a, was a, um, yeah, that's hard. If you've got kids, like that's already, you're already sort of on a back foot. You're on the bottom of the list straight away. So there's, if you're finding it hard that's and we, crazy, we found it? it hard, we had to go to a few places. We were knocked back a few times. If you're finding it hard and then you have these stipulations, I can see where that's an issue. But if, if you've got like masses of choice, you could just be like, all right, I won't go there. I'll go to the next place. But mm. I guess it just depends, really. Yeah, yeah. I think, it, yeah, it depends on what your, like you said, Situation having kids is. and stuff. Like, yeah, because when I think about London, like people talked about like house, getting housed in London's difficult. And I was like, it was ridiculously easy to find someone to live in London. Yeah. But I'm also a single male yeah. with no real need. Like, yeah. I don't. Yeah. This, yeah, yeah and exactly. A good job lined up. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're the like easiest the, tenant yeah. to take on. In the world, yeah. Have you got any until they until they get to know you a bit more? Yes, but before that, <laughs> on paper, you are fantastic. <laughs> I'd like to see your heat map on the on your actual uh, apartment. It'd just be what one lo- like one line to the bed. Oh, and bang, <laughs> it, yeah, and then walk it, straight back out to the to the toilet. Bed, bed to the shower. <laughs> That's it. To the sink. <laughs> To leave. That's it. Uh, if, one would just be everywhere. Kids like if like I owned everywhere. this house by myself, if I was not with Emma, the the other rooms would be full of dust, right? And it'd be literally be my bedroom to the shower and out the... I wouldn't even sometimes go to the lounge. It, you'd have heat. like paper plate, paper... <laughs> no, you'd have like one pe- one mug, one like plate. It'd you'd be, just be simple. It'd be, yeah. Because I just wanted to say like my... I my part, my was playing devil's advocate for most of it in the sense of like, is it right to do the vegan? But... The, like, I'm not. I don't fall on either side really at the moment because it's not like uh, non-vegans have hardship in their life anyway. And I don't know if like at first maybe you let it just be free as you can. Like you try and let the 
um, as long as it's ethically sound enough, you let everyone do what they want to do. And yeah. I think you should only then step in when it's like a big problem. Like, yeah. I don't think government should get involved all the time. I don't want to sound like a crazy socialist. But like, so in this case, in this example, I'll be like, I don't think meat eaters have hardship. Like, this is one small scenario where it happens by the looks of things in the minority. If it becomes a big thing where oh, now it's really affecting us, then you can step in and say, okay, right, let's try and sort this out. Like, with black rights, that's something where there is, so you have to step in. But with veganism, is it is it big enough yet that they're like meat eaters? If anything, I would have thought the vegans often get the hardship, not the yeah. other way around. Okay, I reckon we will start with Alexander's tweet again. Um, yeah, go, bro. Look all right. Don't don't hate on the tweets. Yours are always <laughs> tweets. That's, that's what I bring to the table, I think. Um, <laughs> this one is by Alison B. Garrett. That's A-L-L-I-S-O-N-B-G-A-R-R-E-T-T, if you want to follow. Um, so this tweet is, the assignment description for SA5 was to write a review on a movie that we had seen. The opportunity arose, and I took my chances. Mm-hmm. And in this tweet are three pictures. Um, the first one is of their screen with a word document on it and the word document you just see the title a line a big bunch of space and then a line at the bottom and it says fight club in quotes the first rule of fight club is you don't talk about fight club <laughs> and then the line in the bottom said that's it that's the essay oh my god is it, did it say that <laughs> so, at the bottom so they've submitted it and you can see like their file submission um and they wrote in the comments to their professor I saw an opportunity and I took it. I cannot say that I'm sorry because that would be a lie. Am I proud? Yes. Oh and my God. The, <laughs> the feedback they got from this the This is professor, the best bit. I struggled over this grade for a long time. I finally decided you get a grade for a laugh and how relevant your review is for this particular movie. Let me warn you. Do not try this kind of thing with other professors. They may not have my sense of humor. Score, 100 out of 100. What? Wow. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm, personally if i was a professor i would do the exact same because that's pretty clever it's ballsy it's ballsy it is ballsy. Man, that guy must struggle but getting I, around all day that is ballsy i, I did not see he that must have a wheelbarrow <laughs> because of- <laughs> <laughs> I'm this throwing is, it out to yeah. you guys. What What are your thoughts when you when you look at this? Like, does it remind you of anything? Or can I see the tweet? Can I see the what it looks like? I did not I see the those other um, okay. pictures. Hmm. That's crazy. In... She got like a hundred. Would you Would you Would you ever be brave enough to do that? No, no way. Which that means we don't get the reward that comes with it. Yeah, you got to be strong enough okay, to like I, I... whatever your action is. I say, would I be confident enough to do, or would I do it? I'll give you something that I did. This is real life, what I did in uni. Um, so in uni, in the States, the way it works is you do, uh, like you have credits, you take certain classes and that, but you have what's called electives, where I think it's 30 credits. So about 10 classes where you can just pick whatever you want. I was in my final semester and I had one class that I had to fill in, was an elective. So I took, uh, I took, um, College algebra, which is hold, hold, sorry, let me just pause. The lights went off in Alexander's room, <laughs> and he's trying um, to get get it back on by flicking his hat from side to side. <laughs> next, so, yeah, to a, took, next to a dual carriageway. In my last semester, I needed to <laughs> I needed to fill my last electives, so I took college algebra, which is like the most fundamental math class you can take in college. And I'm a maths major, like that was my degree. So for me, it was just like. Uh, whatever now my advisor was also the maths professor and we had a really good relationship so i said to her can i not attend any of the classes if i can memorize pi up to 50 decimal places and she said yeah all right so i took out a pen like a marker got on a chair in her room in her office and just started writing pi on her wall with a marker and wrote it to 50 decimal places and i didn't go to a class until the final (laughs) What? what the actual i don't even know what you're wait, talking so about you with took pi the, to you 50 took the test and then just passed it anyway like yeah because the test it was an easy was just... test 
But like in total, yeah. I didn't have to do any of the homework. Didn't have to do because in my uni, if you didn't, if you miss three classes, like you fail. So I was like, look, I'm not coming ah. to the classes, all this kind of stuff. But mm. the reason I bring that up is because to me, something would I do this? It's all context of who's the professor and what's your relationship with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't she, believe like, you she, did that. She knew if I was in the class, I would be more of a disruption than anything. Because I'd be bored. Like there'd be people who actually needed the class. Like all this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So to, it was to her benefit to do that. Okay, that's interesting. That's weird. Yeah, and I wonder, like, what, like, what is this assignment even for? Like, if it's like to get you into university, maybe you don't do it. But if it's just like one of those, you know, give an assignment in just to get a preliminary grade. Yeah. Then maybe you give it a go. I saw one which, and I don't know how true this was, where it was in a GCSE paper, like an English paper in the UK. And the question was, um, what, like, define ba- bravery or something like that. And then, um, and bearing in mind, in GCSE in England, it doesn't go to anyone in your school. It goes off to an external examiner. So you don't know who they are. You have no relationship with them. Yeah. And r- instead of writing, like, they had, they had two or three pages of field to try and explain what bra- bravery is. And they just wrote, this is bravery. Full stop. And that was it. Oh, I like that. I like Which, that. That is bravery. But in my head, I'm like, but just go write something on the other page just in case. But then that ruins the first page. Like, then it's not <laughs> worth it anymore. You know, it's like, ah. So See, what, like, uh, how what was the outcome? As, as um, an exam invigilator. If you but I guess that. the thing is, th- th- there's a mark scheme, right? And on the mark scheme, you get points for certain things. So I guess variety of sentences, zero. Like <laughs> oh, <laughs> vocabulary, okay. zero. But like getting the message across, 100. So I guess it depends like what you're... Um, you, you get told, don't you? I would love to give someone like that a lot of marks. But I, oh. at the same time, you have to do it based on... A, um, you're not testing them necessarily on the question. You're testing them on like all the things they've learned the in lots knowledge. of different ways. If it's a math test, it's that's one. Do you know what I mean? Like in math, I guess it's right or wrong. In English, it's like we want to see all these magical things <laughs> wrapped around your answer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't that's like English cool, in school. I don't know if you. <laughs> yeah, I, like, hate, I hated it. <laughs> I was not good at it. No. I think I remember seeing. Um, there was one. It was it was on social media posts, and there were, it was a response where a teacher had said like, or they asked the question, what does the blue door mean in this this particular chapter of the book or whatever? And the kids had responded and they went, no, the blue door, it conveys this emotion because this and this and this. And then the author, like the kids had complained and the author responded, said, no, it's just a blue door. Like <laughs> way too much into this. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, you said just, yeah, just a blue door. I feel like that's why I didn't like English because I feel like, you were marked down because you didn't guess what the person's interpretation was, not yeah. what the actual interpretation is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, which Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's really crazy. You're right. And it's like uh, when people study philosophy as well, I felt the whole point of philosophy is like to challenge the way you think. It's your own. And they're like Yeah, like that's what philosophy is. But then when you t- when you study philosophy, and, and that's not all courses, but courses I've known of, like you don't study philosophy the way you think you're studying like how other people think so it's not really philosophy anymore for me that's just history yeah like you're just saying okay this is you know what i mean so they say like how did uh gant decide this i don't know theorem blah 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 and then you're like um i don't know i think it's wrong <laughs> but that's wrong that's the wrong answer yeah you know like i don't know 100 percent. did you get to see the picture of the so i did the fight the fight club essay. i did i did see it <laughs> good essay <laughs> That, what with do you that, think if you're that, um, that? With that professor, with the professor, I was um I was listening to I don't know what the hell I was listening to, but um there was a professor that was marking other people about their philosophy paper, and he noticed that. And I think this goes with judges as well. Um, that at the beginning when he was marking it, he would like be very into, his marks would be very high, but when he got closer to lunch. His uh, marks would sort of go down. Is this start, real? Yeah, he said he'd mark them like his marks would like start at night eighty eight. He'd be giving eighty eight, and then all of a sudden towards lunch or dinner, it'd go towards like fifty five or like sixty. He the, the marks would dramatically go. So he decided to mark each paper. So he'd mark question one on each paper so that it'd be even. Oh, that's better. But then that's he better. said. When I went, then he said, when I started on question two, I would mark question two 
thinking like it's a fresh start, then he'd look at question one and go, hang on a sec, I gave him a high mark there. So he'd start questioning how high his yeah. marks on question one was when he started doing question two. And he said, oh, do I sort of shift it down to make it because he's not as good in the second question? So he started like second guessing himself. And sort of, uh, and he sort of sh- he said during judges, the six judges that he, um, that he followed, the same thing happened. So at the beginning, he was giving people like, yeah, you go on patrol, uh, parole, you go on parole. And towards lunch, he was saying, denied. 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 Oh. Just because people were getting hungry and so hungry. Like. Ha- yeah, hungry. Hungry. <laughs> so just your perspective, <laughs> I guess. Angry. Like you start your judgment starts the the time of the I don't know. I thought Some it was people get summer. really, really cranky without their food. Like it's oh, yeah. a legitimate yeah. thing. Like they're like, give me food. What do you call that? Cranky. Crangry. It's just the hangry. Just the hangry. Or hankry, yeah. Ha- cranky. Hankry, that means you lose hunger. Cranky, oh, cranky. <laughs> hmm. Do you so get what hungry? you're saying, Dev, is that I don't know what I was saying. Do things. We should Before never lunch. do anything important around lunchtime or home time. Uh, or home or time. time. Because a, l- a lot of Alex, I've told you about I. I do that. I do have the same system. I figure out when I'm most productive, and I work in those areas. And the other ones, I relax more. Yeah. Yeah, because it is. It, you're right. Like, like you said with this article, if you caught this guy on a different day, maybe he wouldn't have gave him that mark. Maybe he would have said, "Uh, the assessor might have been like, he didn't have a good day, or he's hungry, and he's like, why are you wasting my time with this? Why are you? Yeah, yeah. zero. Yeah, well, he didn't waste much of his time, but <laughs> enough of it to open the. Uh... <laughs> or if he had it before lunch, he would be like, how good's this guy? Hundred. I'm going to lunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, of Dev, when you were talking about that Mark skin guy, um, as much as that could be like, oh, no, it sounds like a good idea. How much longer would that take to Mark? It would take like, so he just, long. He just put so much work on himself. Yeah. 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 No, I, well... Would take longer well, you'd have all like, these assignments. You doing, couldn't put them away. You'd yeah, you'd all, have to you'd keep have... flipping through papers like constantly. Yeah. Whereas if you do one one paper at a time, you just go through mm. it. And but he'd have to then... do question one, question one, question one, <laughs> and then he'd have to go back. I guess back. it depends how he's marking them, yeah. But um, Unless the, you have the them all laid out good. on the, like, the floor. <laughs> yeah, but like <laughs> when I, when like, I like mark... Uh, this is something different, but when I like, I t- could say five different manufacturers propose what kind of train they want us to buy, I would mark all the same sections first because then it's easy to compare. Like, oh. I'm like, oh, this one's clearly better than this section. If I mark all of one, I forget how I marked the question one last time. So I'm yeah. like, oh, what, was, what did they do with question one? I have to go back in it anyway. Right. But this is, obviously, it's not the same as the test papers, but I like the idea of going sort of horizontally yeah. across yeah. the papers. And this yeah. is why you should be a maths teacher because then you don't have to worry about subjectivity in your mark schemes. <laughs> <laughs> well, so everyone, everyone that's advice to the world stop being any of yeah, a teacher yeah. other everyone than a math just teacher. only do math teacher. teachers that's it <laughs> unless you don't know all your people easier. all right alexander let's do your one next about the uh the photo the uh Forest photo tweet. Thanks for that intro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that was the worst this one, intro I'm ever. back on Twitter, as per usual. This one is a post by Amy the Vegan. That's A M Y Y the Vegan. Go follow if you want. She's posted one saying, "Imagine having this much of an impact on the planet." Incredible yellow heart emoji. And underneath, she's posted a picture. <laughs> In the picture, it's captioned, in Brazil, a couple planted 2 million trees in 20 years to create a forest. And you have a picture of, it looks kind of like a valley in 2001. And it's like this brown, like barren land. And there's this house in the middle. I guess that's where they live. And then 2019, and it's like this thriving, vibrant green forest. And then underneath it has a picture of the couple. Um, And I just... Brought it forward because I thought that was absolutely fascinating that this couple had that, like, literally had that much of an impact on on the world. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So they had ju- it's the the guy that owns it is a Bra- Brazilian photographer. Can I can I see a photo of this? You want to see a photo? Can I see a photo? Yes. Someone send Dev a photo. 
I want to. I want to have a what's up? A reaction. Yeah, oh, I got it. Yeah. Okay, I've so not seen it either. he had just so the yeah so the the landowner this Brazilian photographer Sebastião maybe I don't know how you pronounce it anyway so he just returned from reporting on the genocide in Rwanda and then when he came back to his land he was like devastated to see that the, there'd been like mass deforestation there um, so him and his wife and some volunteers basically over the last two decades planted four million trees and now it's this absolutely thriving abundant like forest how many, how many trees four million over the past um planted four million trees four yeah. million trees says, this is why i want to see the picture in the post is it four i'm on a different post and it says four million but um, one million is a lot of trees yeah yeah but two hundred thousand is a lot of trees i'll say a thousand's a lot to me but yeah <laughs> We, we could but keep I'm, going I'm down saying, like, and we'd still we're all be about impressed. Millions, he's planted millions across what kind of area? Where's the picture? I don't oh, this is massive, yeah, yeah. Check. Maxi. Have a look. I don't think yeah. um, the four million trees that he planted was all in that one area on the picture. I think just over the last two decades, he's been planting trees like in various right. places, I, I His believe. His organisation or him himself? Him and just some volunteers. Him, his wife, and some. Oh, he did start a non profit, so I think it's within the organization. Okay. Apologies. So the non profit is um, Institu Instituto Terra. So it's dedicated to ecosystem restoration. Um, this, is, this is unbelievable. I know. So over 20 years, that means they planted 550 trees a day. Oh, thanks for that, Max. There you go. The stat man has spoken. Um, <laughs> But so apparently, <laughs> stat man. <laughs> between nineteen ninety, <1990, laughs> between nineteen ninety and two thousand and sixteen, approximately five hundred and two thousand square miles of forests have been lost, which is five hundred five hundred and two thousand square miles of forests have been lost. Wow! Come on, stat man. What you can do with that number? That's pretty much, but. Oh. Deforestation, I didn't know this or this exact figure, but it accounts for 15% of greenhouse gas emissions. How say much? it again, say it again. What did you say? Deforestation yep. accounts for 15% of greenhouse gas emissions. So I'm did gonna you ask know a question why? you probably don't have an answer to. Or maybe you do. Go I on. didn't. Was it why? Well, I, well, I, I don't know. What I was going to ask was, is it, is that because there aren't the trees there to absorb the carbon dioxide that we're now putting out? Or is it well, because of the machinery used for the deforestation? No. Could be both, but also, so the trees absorb the CO2, right? Yeah. And it takes it in and holds it in. When the deforestation occurs, it's all released. And that release of massive CO2 goes up into the atmosphere. I could be wrong, scientists, but I believe that's what happens when... Well, that's what happens in, like, bushfires and stuff. I'm not sure with the deforestation exactly how, like, they It's like when kids hold their breath when they want something. <laughs> <laughs> and then imagine, like, uh, four million kids and all releasing at once. It'd be... It's a hell of a noise. That's, like, CO2 Maybe someone just can released. answer that because how... Deforestation, are they burning it down or are they just cutting it down? They cut down deforestation, I believe. So I don't know how, yeah, I'm not sure. Because when you, when you look at uh, areas where there's deforestation, you see all the stumps. Yeah, that's true. So what's the, how long is the, pro what, how long is the process of photh uh, photosynthesis? <laughs> there's another word. What? How long is the process <laughs> so of creating, like, absorbing the carbon dioxide and then making it into oxygen? What's the, how long does oh that take? Oh, God, I'm not sure. It takes three it's days, seven hours, two minutes and five seconds. Uh. What the hell? Yeah. Do not believe that stat. How long does it take, man? How long does it take you to breathe and create energy? Is that how? Is that what? how quick it is? Well, it's just they just get a constant source of energy through photosynthesis. It's like uh, the sun goes in, hits a cell, mixes with some nutrients, and it clicks and makes a bit of energy. I like love how Max says it with just like it's so obvious, guys. I'm not sure. Like, like that's how my, like this is like something that's no, in your is, face, but I'm not. I'm not 100. Is their energy system in the same way that uh, respiration is our energy system? Right. Yeah, okay. So when you breathe, like it's just an ongoing process uh, okay. that they use. Hmm. Um. So, so usually be... those types of forests are like take mm -hmm. like a hundred years to make, right? But there's a quick quick way to do it if 
you wanted to make your own forest. So the what? S- what? six you can make your own forest, okay? If okay. you so wanted oh, cool. to. Yep. So you just need to start with soil. <laughs> <laughs> And then you have to identify what, well, what nutrients does that soil need, what's it lacking in, whatever. Then you've got to identify, well, what species of trees should I be planting? Like where am I based, et cetera? What's going to grow? What's the climate? Blah, blah, blah. Um, then you have to find biomass to like feed the soil. And apparently you, you can this use... this was simple. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're doing six <laughs> steps, right? It just needs nourishment, but you can use pretty much whatever. So that company or this other company, they usually... Like their limit is to source biomass from a 50 kilometer radius. So um, it could be like manure of some type or whatever. And oh. then it could even be like a byproduct of sugar or something. So maybe you can go down to the local baker. Oh, no, that was wrong. <laughs> Wait, um, what, the bakers grow their own sugar? Yeah, have a okay, byproduct? that was wrong. Don't go to the baker. <laughs> wrong, wrong one. <laughs> hey, Mr. Baker, do you have that byproduct <laughs> of sugar I need? <laughs> no? I walk out of a custard donut and everything against my diet. Oh, it's just not, not going well. like, I really want to eat well. this, but my trees need it. We said Maxi to the baker to get somebody comes back with a creamy <laughs> custard. Custard donut. Yeah, they don't have any. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know any. <laughs> you got the money? No, I spent it all on these creamy custard donuts. Oh my god! <laughs> Where are they? Oh, I've only got one left. <laughs> then you have to just amend the soil level to uh, one meter depth and plant the saplings. They can be up to eighty centimeters high, but the trick is to do it really densely, like pack them in there. What's a sapling? Like, it's like when they're already, it's not like a seed. It's they've already started growing. So uh, bigger than a seedling? Yes. Is, is that the next level? The sapling? Is that? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> that seed? Seedling? It sounds like we're talking about Pokemon. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Seedlings are the ones that you get from the like um, the like flower power or something. So you don't, mm. you don't want to plant the seed. They're mature enough for you to. Maybe it's the same Within thing. like 12 mm-hmm. weeks, you'll have like it'll flower. So you can have eggplant I think, or. I think aren't seedlings like. Flowers and saplings like trees. Oh, is that is that what it is? I I I could be way off, but I think so. Maybe someone can help us with that logical. question. Mm. Um, but three to five saplings per square meter, and then basically, um, it's got to cover a hundred square meters. So as long as you have a hundred square meters, you can make your own forest. And in around eight months, sunlight won't be able to reach the ground, and at that point, every drop of rain that falls is conserved. Um. Every leaf that ah. falls is converted into hummus, whatever that is. Um, and basically, hummus? I, love hummus. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. You got in before Not me. Not chickpeas. Not you chickpeas. <laughs> Man, if you could grow, I don't know what hummus if you grow is. A forest, like a lime or forest, hummus? which has hummus at the bottom. You just Maybe it's you just hummus. A fresh lime on the hummus. <laughs> oh. So our forest has custard. Custard pies and hummus. Um, no, our forest doesn't have custard pies. Oh, it's eating I mean... the custard pies and it's making hummus. What? what? <laughs> so then <laughs> the more the forest grows, the more it generates nutrients for itself, accelerating further growth. And basically, because it's so dense, all the trees are competing for sunlight and that's why it grows so fast. So um, it just selection. needs to be watered and weeded for two to three years and then you leave it and it becomes self-sustaining. And then it gets all animals and stuff Nature like that. Nature is incredible, isn't it? Really, it is. right? So basically, the thing that's is, it. A hundred meters, hundred square meters is a ten by ten area. Like, can you call that a forest? A hundred thousand? Hundred square meters? A hundred square meters? I, I mean, I guess so. Why not? I'd call it the uh, Emma's forest in the back there. <laughs> We don't have. Yeah, a- I'll call that a forest. Like, I think I guess what they're saying is, uh, is a forest when it can self-sustain itself. A ten by ten must be like the sort of number where it oh. gives itself oh, enough okay. shade and self-nourishes. Then yeah. is it a forest? Like, if it's not a forest, at least it's a self self-sustaining set of trees. What's the criteria the for it to be a forest? Is it based say, like, on size, if, if or is look, it just based on what if you Maxie looked was at saying? Ten by ten, that would be smaller than a half court of a basketball court. No, a hundred thousand. Yeah. Was it 100,000? 100 square meters is 10 uh, by 10. Oh, okay. That's minimum though. 100 square meters no, minimum. No, that's what I'm area. just saying. Like if, oh, if you did that. Just, just I mean, so you know. First, they, f- go on. Uh, you asked about the stat thing earlier. They, they, the guy planted, was it him and his wife and his organization? Yeah. Planted 6,000 football fields worth 
Oh, oh. wow. 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 Thanks, That's thanks. incredible. 50. That's okay. Beep, bop, 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 we ba, are ba. at one minute warning. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you just look at that picture, that is incredible what is done. It is incredible. What they have done, rather. I'm setting a challenge for the B-side word and the B-side word listeners. In the next five years to plant five trees. Five trees? Five trees? Five like really? lemon that's, lemon trees? I know that's not a lot, but I want people to actually go. If I said to you plant 100, chances are I'm not going to do it. Five and five Where'd you years. Plant them? No, I was thinking five was a lot. That's why I'm giving you yeah, five we're gonna years. We're going to do five. Out. We're going to do avocado, uh, lemon tree. Yeah, we were. We're going to do citrus. That's a tree here, right in front of me. <laughs> yeah, but you, have my you tree. planted it? Oh, did you plant uh, it? I bought it from someone that planted it. <laughs> what's, what's the I phrase? Can... I feel like Max or Dev will know. I, Dev might know this one off by heart. The one about where you plant the, you you should plant the trees so that the, the people younger than you will get the shade or whatever. I don't know oh. the wording of it. Oh, someone said that. <laughs> it's that? like um, <laughs> no, it's like, like kids show or something. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It something like I'm I'm gonna grow the tree not for me to enjoy but but for my the next generation to sit under or something like that. I can't remember. I saw a picture that said that. Yeah. I just saw, I, I remember the picture. I can visually see it. I don't yeah. know the actual. But it did, I didn't know it was like a catchy phrase. I thought it was I don't like think you it say was. how you want. Yeah. I think we I just think saw that. I think there's lots of different versions of it, but this one yeah. I just yeah. found is, I think the true it's, meaning of life is to plant trees under whose shade you never expect to sit. That oh, was sorry, the one. Sorry, I don't know if you got that. Oh, I thought it was don't was throw good. shade, create shade. <laughs> I thought that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> You've been like watching too much of like Kardashians or so. Yeah. Yeah. Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> can we can we make a, a B-side word t-shirt with that on it? <laughs> don't create shade, <laughs> throw shade. Uh, no. <laughs> no, don't throw shade. Chris. <laughs> Emma. <laughs> Maybe that can be the female version. They'll have that on their tops. And then we'll have the guy's going to have the actual quote. <laughs> Wrong way <laughs> hey everyone, thanks for listening today. If you're listening to the podcast on Spotify or iTunes, make sure you rate and review if you want to drop us some comments. If you're watching on video, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel, give us a like and leave us some comments on your thoughts on any of the articles today and follow us on Instagram at the B-Side Word and check us out on Facebook too. What he said. Catch you on the next one. Ciao.